Welcome to the Dining with Jesus Christian TV show, a show serving our community. We want to say hello to everyone watching us locally and all over the world. We thank our Heavenly Father for allowing us to be here. Bienvenidos a todos ustedes. Father, again, it's just an honor to be here, Jesus. We thank you, God, that your banqueting table for us is so rich, full of so many great things for us, God. You're the good God. You desire abundant life for your children. So, Father, as we just sit at your table and you say, come and dine, we drink of your living water and we eat of your bread of life and we say, you are good, Lord. Take this worship, take all the speakers today and just, just bless, Father. Anoint and, and heal your people, God. Bring them out of captivity into your light to the next level for your glory. Uh, today with us we have uh, Pastor Chris White from Trail Christian Fellowship, along with Pastor Mark Anderson from Ashland Christian Fellowship, along with our hostess, Arhelia Curran. Hello. Arhelia. Hello. Thank you, Steve. Uh, well, let's, uh, today we're going to talk about the salvation topic. It's a very interesting topic, and we're going to start with questions right now for both of you. So let's just start with Pastor Mark. And uh, we're going to, we're trying to answer these questions in a very easy way so everybody will understand. Ahora vamos a hablar del tópico que se llama salvación y tenemos al Pastor Mark, Pastor Chris, que van a hablar, hacer, van a contestar preguntas acerca de este tópico de salvación. Thank you for being here with us. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Uh, Pastor Mark, what is salvation? ¿Qué es salvación? Salvation would be the term, I guess, we would use in general to describe the act of God whereby he set in motion a plan to rescue, to redeem fallen mankind. Uh, mankind had fallen into sin and rebellion, isolating themselves from God. And God set in motion way back when promises and then finally fulfillment of those promises through Jesus Christ to redeem mankind, to bring us back into fellowship, great opportunities for us to know him and live with him eternally. That's salvation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is again for you, Pastor Mark. Do we choose God or does God choose us? Yeah. People have argued about that, but I would say yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> God chooses us, obviously. We would not seek after God on our own. The scripture is very clear that no one is able to do that because we have a broken, fallen nature, unable to spiritually connect with God unless he pursues us. But we choose God too. God gave us the ability to make a free moral choice. That's what sets us apart from every other part of God's creation is the ability to choose. And so God pursues us, but we must respond in faith to his reaching out to us. We reach back mm -hmm. in faith and the relationship then begins. So we can say that he's, he's at the door. He's knocking at the door. Absolutely. And he... He's choosing us, and it's up to us to open the door and let him get in, right? Good way to say that. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, uh, el Pastor Mark nos está diciendo que realmente el Señor nos, nos escoge, ¿verdad? Él está a la puerta, y, y, es, y depende de nosotros si abrimos la puerta o no para recibirlo. Él, él está ahí, y realmente estamos haciendo este programa precisamente para todas las personas que que tienen alguna um, idea confusa. We're, doing, we're producing this TV show for all the people that have not too clear idea about uh, salvation, or, or maybe they say, I, I won't be able to be saved because I'm living in sin, and so, you know, but uh, let's move on, and, and, and the pastors will answer those questions. We will be very surprised about this, uh, the way the Lord is thinking and seeing things right here. Um, Pastor Mark again, you know, <laughs> can you really forgive, I mean, God can really forgive me of all of my sins. I mean, he, Él puede realmente perdonarme por todos, todos mis, mis pecados. Yes, I think as humans we tend to rate and, and somehow put on a continuum worse sins from others. But really from God's perspective, all sin is the same. It, it required a sacrifice in order to be forgiven. That sacrifice was the blood of Jesus Christ. There are no sins that God cannot forgive. The only sin that I know of in the Bible that talks about 
God not being able to forgive would be the one of resisting his Holy Spirit, saying no to his offer, like your analogy of him knocking at the door. Mm -hmm. If he knocks at the door and we refuse to answer, that becomes then by just the virtue of it an unforgivable act okay. because we are not receiving his, his gracious mm -hmm. act of forgiveness towards us. So, uh, very well, thank you. In realidad, el, el Señor nos perdona de todos los pecados que hemos cometido en el momento en que nosotros aceptamos a venir con Él. Por eso nuestro Señor Jesucristo murió en la cruz. That's why Jesus died on the cross, okay. too. So, he, is, he um, paid for all our sins. And, uh, and so, I will, let's move on here. Uh, and uh, I have another question for you, Pastor Mark. How can I be saved? Probably you already answered a little bit about that. But well, I think the hardest part is a, a really believing you need to be. Um, a lot of people are born with an independent spirit, and the idea of, of needing salvation implies that somehow I'm broken or that I am separate. Mm -hmm. But when you come to that position and the Holy Spirit reveals you that, then the next step is to understand God's provision, which was through His Son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who came into the world, lived a perfect life, sinless life, died through no fault of His own, and was able then, because of His his perfect life to take on all of the sin of all the world and his one act of love towards all mankind provided the basis for forgiveness so when i accept that when i believe that mm -hmm. and simply receive that gift that he's offering then the act of salvation becomes personal i receive his gift of eternal life and from then on since i have jesus i have whatever jesus is which is eternal life okay uh pastor chris i have questions for you too okay you know <laughs> Um, will God save, save, saved every, everyone? Will God save everyone? One of the things that we need to think about when we ask a question like that is, does that mean that he doesn't care about all people? And the Bible seems to be very clear that God loved the entire world. He says, for God so loved the world that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. And so I would say when you ask that question is, God loves the entire world, but it's whosoever will believe. And so mm -hmm. uh, even just to elaborate on what, what Mark said previously, and that is God will save everybody that wants to be saved. But that's, that's it. If you don't want to be saved, mm -hmm. God is not going to save you. He doesn't save people against their own will or against their yes. own desires. He's not forcing anybody. He's a gentleman. He says... Hey, I'm knocking at the door. Yeah. You know, it's up to it's up to you. So, um, very well. Let's continue here. And um, can a person? Um, let's. This, this question is for for Pastor Chris. Can I wait until Jesus comes back to accept him, and then be saved? Oh, so like have it on a trial offer after he showed up. It's uh, like uh, I can do whatever I want right now, <laughs> yeah. you know. And but since I know that he's coming, then when he comes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him and I'm gonna say, Lord, forgive me. Yeah, I think that you've pretty much answered that. It's <laughs> it's a bit of a ridiculous uh, uh, proposition you put out, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Is that there is a time? This is a time right now that we live in in which it is the time of the gospel. It's a time of actually what we're doing now, and that is telling people about what Christ has done for them and, and what they can receive, that they can receive salvation for that. But when we talk about this time when you say when Jesus comes back, well, that's a very specific event that we know about in the Bible. And that particular event is actually Christ is not coming back. He came the first time to, to seek and to save. He comes back a second time in judgment of the world. Mm -hmm. and at that point, uh, destiny for people are fixed. And so either you are with the Lord or you're not with the Lord. So that would not be an opportune moment uh, okay. to take the Lord up on his offer of salvation. So, yes. Yeah, check that right off right there. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, I mean, he's not coming back to preach. Not coming back. And say, hey, you know, let's come and, 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 and gather up apostles again or so. So he's going to come back as a judge. He's, he's coming gonna... back. He's, that's what the Bible teaches, actually. Okay. He's coming back to judge the world. Very well. Pastor Chris, can a person lose their salvation, as Hebrews 6, 4 through 6 seems to teach? 
I like the way you phrase that, as that seems to teach. And that's, a, that's an interesting verse in the Bible, and I don't think we want to take that apart from the words of Jesus himself. Where Jesus says in John chapter 1, he says, I am the good shepherd. And, and he talks about that, that he will keep all the sheep the Father has given to him. But one of the things he says is very clear. He says, no one shall ever snatch them out of my hand. In other words, no one can steal any of the sheep the Father has given to Jesus. And so if a person belongs to the Lord, then that means that they are, they are safe within uh, his flock. That, and and it, would, it would be an underestimation to say, I'm going to take myself away from the Lord. And so what I would what I would propose is what you know because I think we we all know people who maybe have fired themselves or resigned from being a Christian or whatever. Yes. I think what what we see happening there is really kind of the the testing of time, and that people that walk away from the Lord, if you will, are people that maybe never belonged to Him in the first right. place, I see. as opposed to people because. In, in John, the Gospel of John chapter 1, uh, the author John uh, says, As many has received him uh, who believed upon his name, he is given the right to become the children of God. Okay. I think I've loosely paraphrased that verse. But the point is, is that Jesus is someone we receive, okay, someone we believe in, but also someone who we become like. And so that speaks of a very deep relationship there, oh, yes. a process that someone engages in over life. And so when we see people walk away, oftentimes that is that they're not engaged in that process. And so all who truly belong to the Lord, truly belong to the Lord and will not be snatched out of his hands. All who don't truly belong to the Lord will, over the test of time, be ferreted out, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good answer. Because I hear people asking this question, about losing their salvation, so. Well, you know, the premise of losing your salvation might be based on an idea that you have really anything to offer mm -hmm. the Lord. And the fact of the matter is, is that we don't really have anything That's to offer sure. the Lord. We don't do anything that really impresses Him and makes Him think, wow, we are just, we're just wonderful. We, I got to get them on my side. Mm -hmm. We don't offer anything. And so uh, all of us have things in our life and times in our life where we fail the Lord miserably. I think mm -hmm. of the Apostle Peter, who was oh, was yes. Jesus' right-hand man who really let him down. Mm -hmm. And the Lord didn't let him off the hook. And I don't think we can do something that would be so bad that we, if we belong to the Lord, that we would fail him because he did it all for us to begin with, for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good that we are um, asking these questions because some people in the world, you know, they might wonder right now, oh, I'm not worthy for the Lord. I'm, I'm not a good person. He will never forgive me. He will forgive us. As, and the time when you choose to be with him, you choose Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, that time you come to him. You are his, his kid, you know, and, and, and it's, it's beautiful. Uh, Pastor Chris, um, can the, can the Christian, well, the, I, I think you already answered that question, but um, the question here is, can the Christian believer lose his salvation? You already answered that. This is another question I have here. If we accept Jesus as Savior, can we then sin all we want? Because <laughs> these people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Christian. I, I can't sin because, you know. So kind of like a, like a get out of jail pass sort mm -hmm. of thing, yes. like on Monopoly yes. or something like that. You know, the believer, someone who, once again, getting back to someone who truly belongs to Jesus, someone who believes, who receives, and is trying to become like them, mm -hmm. is not going to have a desire. If the Lord has entered into their heart, they've opened their heart to Him, they're not going to have that desire to go out and quote unquote, have a buffet of sins, yeah. you know. Uh, a good friend of mine said, it doesn't work where you just sin all you want and then just at the end you think, well, I'll take a, a, a bath in grace mm -hmm. and get myself all cleaned up. The Lord lets us do that, but the problem is, is the water in that bath might be a whole lot hotter than we're ready to enjoy sitting mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So uh, all, that, all that to say is most people, I would say a reasonable person who is, following the Lord would not deliberately set out to live a lifestyle mm -hmm. like that. And if you are a Christian, 
watching this program and you're deliberately living a life like that, you might want to ask yourself what your relationship with the Lord really is like. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, next question from Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, if I, if I give uh, money to my church, uh, that way I will man maintain my salvation? Oh, that's a great <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry that's, that, that's a question. That is, yeah. and, and that, is a, that is a fair question. You know what I would say, once again, is what is it that we have to offer God, mm -hmm. really? The Bible says we, we have nothing to offer God. He has much to offer us. We don't really have anything to offer Him in the first place. I think it's a foolish thing and a, a fool that would want to uh, participate in a congregation or be part of a church that wouldn't want to support his house of worship. Mm -hmm. His house of worship is a, is a point of, of help and service and, and belonging to him, and you'd want to underwrite that. Obviously, anything we believe in, our money follows that. But on the other hand, of using that to earn salvation, well, that would be a means of buying your salvation, mm -hmm. which once again is something we don't, we don't buy it, something that comes as a free gift. It costs Christ everything, mm -hmm. but he gives it to us for free. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. So, eh, le pregunté al pastor um, Chris que si, que si da uno dinero a su iglesia, con eso, eso mantiene la salvación. Y realmente no, la salvación no se consigue pa, al dar limosna o al hacer eso, sino que Dios nos escoge y nosotros aceptamos ser sus hijos. Um, vamos a continuar con la siguiente pregunta. Pastor Chris, um, was Judas saved or did he lose his salvation? We just keep coming back to this, <laughs> this thing about losing our salvation. Was Judas saved? Well, Jesus actually said, uh, Jesus actually did say that Judas was never saved. Mm -hmm. He actually said he is the son of perdition. Yeah, that's and, true. Uh, and so was Judas ever saved? No, but he hung around. And maybe, if anything, that's a, that's a warning uh, to, to all of us is hanging around the people of God is not the same thing as belonging to the people of God. And that's, Judas did a lot of hanging around Jesus, true. and yet he didn't really belong to him. And then, you know, gosh, right at the end, he got hung up when all the good things were happening. So, uh, you know, you wanna, we want to be careful not to use Judas as a model mm -hmm. for anything. But, <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's true. <laughs> but that's why we call them people Judases is because yes. they're a traitor. Yes, so. that's true. So, um, Pastor Mark, uh, is a good person saved? I think Pastor Chris has done a great job in helping us to understand the Bible says that no good thing that we do really earns us any favor with God. In fact, there's an illustration in the Old Testament that I love. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 talks about um, that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. So the very best that we can humans pr can pr produce um, compared to the righteousness of God are like dirty, filthy rags. So if the very best that we can do doesn't impress God, Mm -hmm. then certainly the good works, the things we think and we pat ourselves on the back for, they really don't earn us any favor with God. Um, we might get some nods from other humans who would try to tell us, well, you're a saintly person. I hear people mm -hmm. say from time to time, wow, if anybody's in heaven, it's that person because they were such a wonderful person. Well, that implies that heaven is reserved for good people, and it's not. Mm -hmm. It's reserved for forgiven people people who are willing to acknowledge that their very goodness is never good enough to measure up to Christ's goodness. And God's goodness is on a totally different plane. You know, we would rate ourselves between an ape and an angel, somewhere in between, but God's category is completely off the charts. He's not on the continuum at all. So it doesn't matter whether I'm better than someone else or worse than someone else. The question is, how do I compare to God? Am yes. I able to be in God's presence without an act of God to make me so? And the answer is no. So my good works could never impress God. Thank you. Gracias. Le pregunté a Pastor, my, a Pastor Mark que si una persona que se dice que es buena eh, adquiere salvación o se siente salva. Y realmente la salvación no se adquiere a través de lo que uno hace, de las buenas obras y todo eso. Eh, lo explicó en un principio, lo explicaron los dos en un principio, que la salvación viene por gracia de Dios. Él nos escoge para ser salvos y nosotros aceptamos o no estar con Él o ser, o ser sus hijos. Así es que, um, good answer, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Pastor, um, 
But uh, this is a, another question for Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark, how can how can can I tell if somebody else or someone is saved or not? I think Christians tend to fall into that category, and they try. It's a trap, really. And the bottom line is um, that's above our pay grade. We don't know who else is who is saved and who isn't. God only knows. And when we try to judge based on what we think a Christian should or should not do we are not able to look in their heart. Their actions may be wrong, but God knows the motives of the heart. And so I would just say, from my own perspective, God knows. God knows. Okay. You know, quite frankly, sometimes I wonder if I'm saved. But then I look at the free gift of God through Jesus Christ, and I know that I've trusted in that. If I look at my own behavior, then I start wondering. When I look at what Christ did on his behavior, then I'm secure. Mm -hmm. So now we need to... Um I'm going to ask Pastor uh, Mark to see if he will be willing to close this segment. I know we have lots of questions. We're going to probably have to do this TV show like for two hours or so. It's <laughs> 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 just too, too much information. But I would like to ask you to please pray for um, God's healing and grace to all the people that are watching us. I know there are lots of people watching us right now. Um, here in the United States, in Mexico, South America, Peru, uh, Ecuador, uh, we have lots of um, brothers and sisters here, you know, and, um, and, and I, and I want to send this pray to my mother who is in very ill. Uh -huh. So, thank What's you. your mother's name? Pitz. She goes by Pitz. Pitz. P-I-T-Z. Pitz. Okay. Yeah, Let's pray for her. She has some... Um, um, Parkinson, oh, wow. and it's in the last stage. I'm sorry. Let's pray for her. For everybody. Yes. Thank you. Lord, it's my privilege to pray for Pete's and for all those others who are struggling. We know, Lord, that you are able to simply, by your word, release a word of healing into the bodies and minds of those who are in desperate need of that. And so we would ask God that you would meet them, you would strengthen them, you would give them peace, that you'd work your miracles in their lives. Uh, give them the gift of faith to trust you, Lord. Uh, we ask that you would reveal yourself to those who are open to that, that uh, they would uh, hear you knocking at the door, and they would open that door to have a relationship with you. And those who are battling diseases and illnesses, uh, may they first experience that spiritual healing of their heart and mind. And then, Lord, would you graciously, in your goodness, pour out a healing upon those who you know would, uh, would just give that glory to you. And we just pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the, all the pastors that are in the valley that are praying for this Dining with Jesus TV show. I know there are pastors even in Mexico. We have this church, um, More Life is the name of that church. And they have like 5,000 brothers and sisters. The, um, and the person that is in charge of the prayer group there is praying for, for us and um, all the pastors in the valley, you know, this is so beautiful. To Jesus, today is the day. Come to him. He is always there. He's knocking at the door. Open the door. Thank you for watching Dining with Jesus TV show. Thank you. Thank you for being here.